So back to this question, sketch the possible graph of the original function by being given the graph of the first derivative function. So everything that we looked at before, we're going to kind of have to look at backwards here a little bit. First of all, everywhere that the first derivative is negative tells us f is decreasing. So I know that on the interval from negative infinity to negative 7, I need to draw where f is decreasing. So let's make us a list over here. From negative infinity to negative 7, f is decreasing. That downward arrow means decreasing to me. Everywhere else from negative 7 to positive infinity, f is increasing. Okay? Because the outputs of the first derivative function are positive. So that tells me f is increasing. I know that at x equal negative 7, if f prime equals 0, that means that f has a horizontal tangent. And I can get even more information from the graph of f prime. Outputs go from negative to positive, which tells me f has a min. So at x equal negative 7, f has a min. I know that at x equal 1, in the same vein, I have a horizontal tangent line, but I don't necessarily have a max or min. I go from increasing to increasing. So all I know is that f has a horizontal tangent line. Just kind of make it a list of what f prime is telling me. Now, let's see here. f double prime can tell me some things about the graph of f as well. And I can get information from f double prime looking at f prime. From negative infinity roughly to about right there, f prime is increasing, so f double prime is positive, so f is concave up. See all that? I went from f prime to f double prime, tied that back into f. So from negative infinity to, we'll call that negative 4 and a half, somewhere around in there, f is concave up. I know that from roughly negative 4 and a half all the way up to x equal 1, f prime is decreasing, f double prime is negative, f is concave down. We'll go ahead and put that over here. From negative 4.5 to 1, f is concave down. And from 1 to positive infinity, we'll add that right here, f, because f prime is increasing, f double prime is positive, f will be concave up. Same thing happening right there. Concave up. I also know that at x equal negative 4.5, f has an inflection point. At x equal 1, f has an inflection point. And that's verified here. Concave up to concave down to concave up. Concavity does change. Let's see now what we can do about getting an accurate graph for f. I don't know where f has zeros. I have no idea where it crosses the axis. All I know is about decreasing, increasing, maxes, mins. That's all I know. So from negative infinity to negative 7, f is decreasing. I don't have any idea whether it 
you know, crosses the x axis axis at any point. I don't know if this is happening way up on the north end of the y axis or way down on the south end of the y axis. What I do know for absolute certain is that it is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 7 and it is increasing after that. I know that at negative 7 it has a minimum. So that tells me I have a horizontal tangent line. I also know that at x equal 1 up here it has a maximum and it continues to increase. And I know that at roughly negative four and a half right around here, it has a concavity change, meaning it goes from uh, concave up to concave down, roughly something like that. Let me see if I can make that a little smoother. Concave up to concave down, and I know that I go at negative four and a half to negative one, I'm concave down. From one to positive infinity, I'm concave up. I have an inflection point. F has a minimum at negative seven. It has a maximum, which I don't have drawn there, so let's try that again. I'm concave down, and so it has a maximum there at one, and I'm concave up again. So it looks something like that. So we are increasing over that entire interval, which I've got there, decreasing over this entire interval. I have a min at x equal negative 7. I have a horizontal tangent line. I said max, but I mean a horizontal tangent line at x equal 1. Concave up from negative infinity to negative 4 and a half. Concave down, and I have an inflection point there. Concave down, negative four and a half to one. Another inflection point there, and back to concave up over the rest of the interval. That's the best I can do to draw the graph of F. And I definitely am not anchored vertically in this plane at all. The, the only thing that I can discern from the graph of the first derivative is what might be going on horizontally. Where I have maxes, where I have mins, where I'm decreasing, where I'm increasing, where I have horizontal tangent lines, where I have inflection points, that's about all the information I can get. And I have no idea, north or south, where I am in the plane. Your work might not look exactly like mine if we were both given this problem. So that's the best that we can do. And again, we want to try to draw it as smooth and continuous as we can because the first derivative does exist everywhere, so we know f of x is smooth and continuous everywhere. All right, so that is the end of this first lesson on the relationships between f, f prime and f double prime. We'll actually move on to another lesson that's more information like this, and it's more AP style problems that I want us to look at in the next lesson. But come to the next class period ready to do some homework on these graphs.